This game is not easy to jump into, so I have put together the best beginner's tips I've learned for Project Zomboid. Before we talk about the fun stuff, I want to let you in on a little combat tip. Uh, by default, the game only adds an outline to zombies when you're aiming with a gun, but to change this, you can go into your settings and switch aim outline to any weapon. This makes it much easier for you to see which zombie you can hit and which zombies are close enough to end your career. With that taken care of, let's cover spawn locations. In a list of easiest to hardest, Riverside has a low population with plenty of potential safe houses. Rosewood has a nice strip of commercial buildings right outside its gated community, and that's where you're most likely going to hole up. Muldrow has a lot of interesting places to loot, but comes at the cost of large hordes all over the place. And West Point is arguably the hardest place to spawn immediately since the population is ridiculously high here. However, this is the closest spot to Louisville, so weigh that as you will. Listen, I'd recommend looking into what the traits actually do and not going by the tooltips given, but there are a few cheesy exploits and decent ways to cover up your weaknesses. Not all negative traits are game ending. Prone to illness, smoker, weak stomach, slow reader and claustrophobic, just to name a few, aren't all that bad at all. I'd highly recommend taking all of them actually, but keep in mind they will change some aspects of how you play the game for a few months, if not your entire lifespan. And as the game updates, this list may become different or less effective or just outright wrong. If you find yourself struggling with combat, balancing your carry weight, and escaping zombies, I'd recommend picking up stout or strong and fit or athletic traits. Strong and stout affect your carry capacity and strength, with strong giving a 140% increase to melee damage, while fit and athletic affect your fitness level and your endurance, allowing you to run like the wind for just a little longer than normal. Some very good positive traits to prioritize are handy, wakeful, fast learner, and organized. I wouldn't really bother with wakeful in multiplayer though, maybe just take um, fast reader. Really traits are just mixing and matching until you find a combo that you personally like. This is what I run most of the time and this is my meme build. All right, you got your character, you've picked your spawn location. Now, when you spawn in, press C. You'll start crouching and this will help you sneak by zombies for the most part. You're not invisible, but for the most part, you're good. Go to the kitchen and look for any starter weapons. This would be a kitchen knife, meat cleaver if you're lucky, a frying pan is good. Uh, anything is better than nothing, but nothing is better than a spoon. Don't bother with utensils. While you're in the kitchen, you're gonna wanna grab food. Do not go crazy here. Make sure to only grab enough food for a day or two. Every house has food in the early days. You're not going to run out anytime soon. You do not need to spend your first minute preparing for 60 seconds of distance running, all you gotta do is grab a couple perishables and one canned food, maybe. Now at least half of your key items list is in the kitchen, so you're gonna want to look for a can opener and any water container of any sort. Bottles, cups, anything you can use at first is great. You'll automatically drink from this if it's got water in it. Now go onto one of the rooms and look for clean clothes to rip into bandages. You're gonna want a steady supply of these if you took prone to illness because you have to change those bandages out, otherwise you're gonna get infected. <laughs> Speaking of infected, let's move on to the bathroom because this is where you're going to find most of the medical supplies. If you find any, that is. More importantly, we're looking for painkillers and beta blockers because if you run the build I run, you are panicked all the time. But you're also going to want to look for antibiotics because if those wounds do get infected from your prone to illness, you're going to want those antibiotics to combat that infection. Most medical supplies has a low weight, so you're going to be fine just grabbing what you find and keeping it in a bag or in your back pocket or your fanny pack. Speaking of bags, any kind of sack, just look for anything you can use to carry more items. A garbage bag, a backpack, anything. Thing. Just don't try to hop a fence with it in your secondary hand, or, or primary for that matter. You'll drop it and wonder where it went 10 minutes later. Bags you can carry on your back are much nicer, like a duffel bag, a school bag, anything you can find. But in the early game, beggars can't be choosers, so yeah, even the fanny pack will work. If you've got the space to carry more things, you should look out for beginner and intermediate books, needles and first aid kits, scissors, thread, a screwdriver, a saw, seed packets, and a backup weapon or two. Odds are you will never find all these things in your first spawn house. It's okay if it takes a few Few days to gather all these items. You're not in any peril just because you don't have a pair of scissors on the first day, Jake. So you're probably going to want to leave your spawn house at some point or you'll be assaulted from within your spawn house. The number one rule here is to understand your limitations. You never want to bite off more than you can chew. If you just have a basic weapon, you probably don't want to take on more than two zombies. With a better weapon and some good strength, you can probably take on five or six. Your environment can be used to greatly increase your odds. For example, if there's a window between you and the zombies, this is basically 
free loot as long as you don't get tired or break your spacebar. If you can put some doors and walls between you and your immediate threat, that'll be enough to stagger them. Line of sight and sound are very important for luring and escaping zombies. They can hear you, and they will remember the last place you were at. Learning the ins and outs of this will let you start playing with the zombies pathfinding if you're sneaky enough. Retinaru covers that in great detail, and I'll link to his video in the description. If you find yourself dying to zombies, hiding behind doors, you've got three options, four if you count chickening out. First, if your reflexes are quick enough and your game doesn't lag, you can just flick the door open and close it again by double pressing E. This will give you enough vision to know roughly how many zombies are behind the door, and nine times out of ten, you'll be fast enough that they can't pass through the door. The second option is opening the door from the side. This one's nice and simple, but I wouldn't recommend it in a tight, closed space. And third, you can just push the door. Walk up to it, get ready to attack, and press spacebar. Just bully it. You'll push against the door, and if there's any zombies behind it, they'll lock onto that sound and start banging the door down. The only weapon you should avoid using early on are guns. Your character isn't good with them, unless they are. You could be a police officer or a, I think a veteran also gives a gun skill. Otherwise guns are pretty much paperweights. For a long while. Now one shot will guarantee you one kill, but I'm not sure you want this kill. Guns just aren't worth using until you've gotten good at the relevant skills. Now how do you level up those skills? Well, I've got a video on that coming very soon, and when it's out, it'll be up here. Next two steps to get you on your way are finding a car and choosing a base. Finding a good car is a big step. You immediately gain a portable safe house and a rolling storage unit. Odds are you're going to run into more vehicles than you can drive, so I'm going to recommend you either keep note of where the vehicles you found are, or just go ahead and hoard them once you find a good parking spot and some gas. You might find the keys around the car, on zombies near the car, or in the cars themselves, but if you'd like to skip keys altogether, you can gain two skills in mechanics and one skill in electrical to start hot wiring vehicles. Or choose the burglar profession. I can't judge you, I do that. As fun as it is, running over zombies and crashing your vehicle will damage it. Avoid that at all costs. As I said though, it is some of the most fun I've had in this game, so I understand if you just can't. It might be a good idea to have a backup car used just for zombie clearing, because it is fun. You, you cannot deny that this is fun, but if you're running into things a lot, then maybe you should just reel it back and take Sunday driver as a negative trait. It's not gonna hurt you that much. As far as picking a safe house goes, there really isn't any hard and fast rule for it. Anywhere can be a home. Just as long as you like the spot you've picked and you think it's viable for the long term, give it a shot. If you need ideas to keep yourself safe from the undead menace, I've got a video detailing how to make your base impenetrable right here. I know it's a lot of move and groove, but as soon as you have a safe house built, you're gonna want to start planting vegetables. The food in your surrounding area isn't going to last forever, and the sooner you can begin harvesting, the better. Try to stagger your crop's growth times by a few days to offset one harvest rotting and leaving you with nothing to eat. If you need more information on planting vegetables, I've got a video right here. In the same vein as farming, I suggest you pick up one of the two, trapping or fishing. You can do both, but in the early game I would recommend just taking up one. If you're strapped for time, I'd recommend trapping, and if you've gotten lucky and have a lot of time to kill, fishing isn't a bad way to spend it. I've got videos on both meat gathering methods for you to check out right here. It is inevitable that your base is going to need some quality of life improvements, and it's not like Ikea is going to ship you the free and you ordered last week. It's up to you to go out and find the furniture you want in your base. As far as long term living goes, I'd recommend as many water dispensers as you can find. They're usually in offices. These don't weigh too much, but hold a nice amount of water. Just in case it doesn't rain for a while, you can leave these off in the corner. You can also pick up some metal drums if you come across them. These will hold much more water than rain collectors or water dispensers for that matter. Stealing a TV is only stealing if your neighbor is still alive. In game, of course. But having a TV in your base is even more helpful now that they've added in VHS tapes for life and living programs. Having a fridge and a freezer or two is going to take your food storage from hoping your harvest lasts you through the winter, it won't, to meal planning like a proper two-star chef. I'd recommend hitting gas stations for their freezer units and lugging those back to your base ASAP. It is unfortunate, but true, some safe houses won't come with a bed ready for you. You'll have to bring one of your own. Like I just said, Ikea is out of the question, so I hope you've got a car. Knowing how to use a generator is one thing, but finding a generator is another. Even if you have no clue how to use it yet, I'd recommend picking it up and relocating it to your base as soon as you spot one. You can learn how to use it later, and besides, knowledge is only as powerful as the ability to use it. Now, after you've gotten comfortable and into the swing of things, the helicopter event swoops in to stop all of that, usually around eight days in, and if you're a masochist, you can go into your sandbox settings and set it so that it happens more than once. Sometimes I do this, genuinely. The event can end your run if you aren't prepared for it, so once you hear the helicopter approach, you'll want to book it away from your base to avoid it being overrun by zombies. 
If you're caught on the toilet like me, you may be able to get out alive, but your base is going to belong to zombies until you can clear it out. The safest thing to do is to drive around and not stick to one place for too long. But if you don't have the gas for that, then it's a good idea to have a small base you can quickly fortify until the helicopter and its horde passes. Or if you're an overachiever, you'll already have these mini bases set up. From here on out, your main goal is to stay alive. Following this should help you get a feel for the basics of the game, but one of the most important mechanics to remember is death. You are going to die. That felt good. The game tells you this is how you died. It's not lying to you, my guy. You don't have to delete your save after you perish because the point of the game is to learn from how you died, drop a new character, and just don't do that next time. You can even challenge your zombie self to a duel and get all your stuff back. Unless you're on multiplayer, of course. Then you're probably getting picked clean by the next group of survivors that sweeps through. Or your friends. My last tip is this. If you feel safe, you're not. There's always more zombies, there's always a mistake, and there's always death. Don't get comfortable, don't get confident, don't lower your guard, just keep harvesting your vegetables and you'll be alright. Good luck.